Welcome everyone to the Irrelevant Podcast. I'm Nathan Jones with my co-host Alex Lewis, and this is Anything and Everything Irrelevant in the World Around Us, back for episode 9. I thought it was 10, I got excited for a second, but it's not 10, it's 9. Alex reminded me that's 9. We've not gotten to the double digits yet. <laughs> Tune in next week though, we got a big surprise for episode, well it's not really a surprise, but it's going to be a big one for episode 10. We do have an awesome guest, that the, is for sure. The master at creating freak athletes. Well, yeah. One of the masters, for sure. Uh, um, but yeah, so what's up, Nate? How's dad life? Dad life is exi- it's uh, it's uh, relentlessly exhausting. That's what I told someone today. You, are you excited for Father's Day coming up to get treated like shit and completely forgotten about? No, my wife would never do that. I actually have I was a- watching someone stand up and they're like, somehow they ranked Father's Day as the 20th most popular holiday. 20th? Like, Wow. Who the hell has 19 other holidays? That's what I'm saying. I can't even I can't even name 19 other holidays. What? It was like Arbor Day and <laughs> Wait, behind Arbor Day? Oh boy. Yeah, man, you're not important. Where's Mother's Day rank? I wonder. Like third. Wow. Or second, maybe. It might have been second behind Christmas. All right. My wife's more important than me. I get it. It's well, fine. we knew that already. They're the ones that actually make the baby. It takes two to tango. Come on now. Yeah, well, it only takes us, you know, 60 seconds. <laughs> You're giving yourself a lot of credit there, buddy. I know. It's a long 60 <laughs> seconds. A long Trust 60 me. On, seconds. on the platform, 60 seconds is a long time. Everybody watching you. I didn't even notice that part. That was weird. Yeah. How? Okay. Let's, so, everyone, <laughs> Alex has officially competed and got his totals. Oh, no, I'm first... now a power lifter, stupid. Isn't that how this works? Yeah. Did you just throw your whole identity into the hobby that you do? He is completely embedded into power. No, he's not. He's not. But he does have a total finally on the platform. Shitty one. A shitty total. <laughs> the number. Somewhere to go up from. Uh, it's going to be pretty easy because I didn't, except for fucking myself on bench, I didn't really find out where the boundaries were. I don't even know if that was a boundary on bench as bad as my setup was. Alex decided to do speed work on the day of the competition for his deadlift and his squat instead of actually (laughs) figuring out what his one rep max was. Fuck you. I got a 27 pound PR on squats and a 15 pound PR on deadlift. And it looked like he was doing speed work, everyone. (laughs) My fault. Sorry. Sorry. I know how to peak well. My bad. He also needs to learn what apparent legal squatting depth is for his organization because he was dragging his ass to the ground apparently i don't understand what it matters if i go deep who cares that's what well because it's harder the lower I've you never go had any women complain about it ayo <laughs> clip Singer. it clip it to a good one today. <laughs> clip it <laughs> yeah but what so where where would have been the legal depth for like how much lower were you Dude, fuck if i i think where the depth is is probably when i feel my belt hit Mm-hmm. And because in training, I didn't think that was depth and I made myself learn to go past that. I just, you know, well, it worked. I mean, I mean, those knee sleeves work just fine when you go past depth. They I would imagine not work there. they're going to work better almost. Yeah. I mean, considering my third one looked the best and it was the heaviest. I don't even know if I was using them for the first couple. <laughs> so you, yeah, I was about to say you hit your first one. So then what did you No, I missed the first one. Oh, I you missed your first one. Rack command. Okay, but you squatted it. Oh yeah, I definitely. So as soon that. as as soon as you squat the first one, what's going through your head? Fuck! I should have listened to the rack man. <laughs> I'm just talking about as far as like number wise, like oh boy, did you? Oh, that... I had already had it all planned out. I just did follow the plan. Yeah, but then yeah. was the plan in your mind going? Oh no, this is too light, or I started too low, or did you not really care since it was your first time? What do you as far as what the third one or the like your opener? Did one? you feel like your opener was too low then after that point? No, it was just what I was comfortable doing all the time. I've done 405. I don't know. I don't know how many times over the past years. That was so your was opener like, 405. Yeah. So you went those 405. Sleep, man. I'm not used to those. Yeah. 405 second attempt was what? 440. And then you went for what to end it? 457? 457 and a half. Or 57 and a half. Don't shorten the half, everyone. Don't shorten the half. I don't care about the half. I was going to go 462 <laughs> and I dropped it down to 457. He got worried. I should have went to... Yeah, well, I just didn't want to... I had already right. missed one. I, I did not want to miss more than one lift for each category. Yeah. That was part of the goal. Yep. So hit the squat. 
two out of three on the squad just because of a bum command. And then you go to what the bench. Is that right? Bench. Feeling real confident about bench. Bench feels good. Warm up area. I have good leg drive, even to the point where like my hip flexors are getting tired. Like I knew I was using my legs at one point. Right. Don't think I ate enough in between. That was probably one of the downfalls. So, then I get to do the first bench mm-hmm. and they didn't give me any red lights and they definitely should have. They missed that one. Just because the pause? Yeah, the pause, I was still shaking at the bottom. <laughs> so, like I knew that was going to be part of it. Like when you're like three lifts out of the meet and you're like switch to the skinny bench and you realize, oh, fuck, my shoulders don't have any stability here. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm not going to change that in this amount of time. Right. Be cool. It's not going to happen though. Yeah. So did, uh, you said you didn't eat enough in between. How much time did you have in between from the squat to the bench? Like what Three you- flights, so like probably almost an hour. Hour. What did you try to pump yourself full of and how much? I had Rice Krispies and rice noodles. Yeah. I think that's something very simple that, so like, this is, I'm sidetracking here, but like all these kids that are playing in tournaments and things like that on the weekend, and there's four or five game splits and things like that. Uh that don't eat or eat improperly in between. It's like, can you just eat some simple sugars, please? Like, can you just get some carbs in you and prepare some carbs and eat those in between games so you don't just absolutely die out here in the sun? (laughs) Because it's... Or even, like, before, like, practice. I don't think kids eat before they go to practice, so then they eat from, like... They eat at noon or whatever, that skimpy lunch, and then they don't eat and... Anything going to practice, and then they have no energy, and they wonder why practice is terrible and horrible, and they're waiting for the end to come. So, anyway, yeah, no, so, I had yogurt before I went, and then I probably had, I don't know, ten or fifteen Rice Krispies throughout the day, and then like, gotcha, probably like almost hundred grams worth of carbs and rice noodles. Jeez, in between. Yeah, I mean, hundred grams of carbs and rice noodles is only like six or seven ounces. It's not that much. Not too bad. Yeah, because they're so dense. Stinking things are dense. Nutrient wise, yes. Yep. So what happened on? So you did. So I did the opening bench. Opening bench. I didn't know how bad it was, but it wasn't very good. Right. So I continued with the plan. The plan was to go to 319 because I wanted to get a five pound PR on the platform. Uh huh. And that just stapled me because I don't think I used any leg drive. Right. So they have carpet on the platform that uh-huh. you're benching and squatting and deadlifting on. I don't know about you, but I don't fucking lift on carpet. Uh, I do not. I have rubber mats. <laughs> right. And I would seem to realize when I put my feet on the rubber, I just automatically have cued myself to push my feet and drive myself across the bench. Right. I don't think I was doing that on the carpet. Which Pro- I mean, why I had no leg drive. Yeah. Was it? Combine it- that with the shaking again and even longer pauses. Ugh. And... It was hard to get out of the hole. That's crippling, man. Just sitting there with that stuff on the bottom of the bench. Ugh. Get this man, crap off me. My bad. No, it sucks. It sucks being down there with that weight on your chest, man. <laughs> like, I didn't sucks. mind it. I just wish I would have prepared better so my shoulders weren't fucking shaking and I could just control it and do it. So I also don't had, think I was rowing it to my chest very well. You had used a bigger bar, like a, round, a thicker bar? or No, no wider bench. Oh, wider bench. My bad. I'm the with fat you. The fat pad Donnie Thompson makes is way wider. Oh, yeah. And it supports your shoulders. I love benching with that thing. Right. So why wouldn't I bench for that with that for the last two years, three years I've been at the gym? <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, six weeks out, not even probably four weeks out of the meet, I switched to a skinny one. Not thinking that it would be that drastic of a difference. And holy shit. It's pretty big. Yeah. I tell the kids that all the time. If they go, it's funny. You'll watch them when they go for like a PR. They'll switch the bench out because I have a skinny one, and then I have the fat pad one. And they always go grab the fat pad one right before they're about right. to try to PR. And I'm like, yeah, that's smart. If you're not powerlifting. Fuck it. Go for it. But if you're powerlifting, I don't recommend the fat pad for because they make the thick comp pad, right? Rogue right. Does. Mm-hmm. Like, go ahead and use that, but don't use the wide Donnie Thompson one. Right. Like, I use that for so long. I don't specifically have the Donnie Thompson one, but I do have the Rep Fitness Fat and Wide Pad, and it's really good. I really liked it. But, but so yeah, that fucked me. Ugh. And no leg drive, I think, also fucked me. I think that was a bigger problem. Bench press isn't a leg exercise. What are you talking about? It is when you learn how to use leg drive. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing when you teach people that for the first time, when they like 
set up correctly and use their legs they're like oh wow that felt easy i was like right yeah. and mine didn't feel mine felt all upper body and i didn't feel it and you can look in the videos and see that i wasn't even right? yeah yeah it's hard to get is it you think that's hard to get people to sync that up lower and upper because that's what people say all the time they're like it's hard to sync lower and upper to press at the same time and i'm still struggling well, to do you that just too. maintain tension through the lower part you don't have to sync anything it's just, You're just transferring energy drive yeah that's the idea, right? It's like, think about pulling a string back on a bow. Mm -hmm. you want your body to be the end of that string. Right. Energy is just traveling through it. I uh, I think uh, people like like a, a me too, when they get to the bottom, it feels heavy and they lose tension really quick because they don't like being under heavy weight. Good yeah, luck. I just never had it. Yeah. I just, I have a strong enough upper body that I think I plowed through the first one with no leg drive really. Right. And then the other ones, they just went, nope, not happening. Gotta have the leg drive to get that up. Yeah. I also fucked up my wrist wrap both times before the second and third attempt, so that's fun going into it. And it's like, yeah, bench was just a shit show. It was. <laughs> it was bad. Oh no. That I like I said though that I think that's where I would have struggled too, or would struggle the most if I was doing a meat bench. Bench is by far probably the worst one that I could do. I thought that was gonna be my easiest. Really? Yeah, it went so well in training. Gotcha. That's why you mentally didn't have it. Guess not. Or maybe you just mentally were over prepared for it. So you're like, ah, it'll be a breeze. And then the right. carpet. Maybe I don't freaking know. Freaking carpet got you. That's the real cold the fucking carpet. <laughs> next time, just buy you some carpet patches and put them down where your feet are next time. <laughs> I just, uh, I started thinking about it afterwards and I'm like, I don't think I was using my legs. Yeah. Like I know when I'm on the, the rubber. Like I feel it, so I push my feet to the front of my yeah, shoes. Well, it grabs you. I mean, the rubber just grabs you, for the most part. So then you, we we move on from the bench. We go to the deadlift. And then we're pissed off, right? And then try to move on past that. <laughs> Take about five minutes, and well, I'm still pissed about the bench. So I don't know if I really got over it, but we move on. Wait another hour. What is it? Probably an hour. It's longer than an hour. Whatever amount of time. Then deadlifts happen. Deadlifts are pretty fun. What'd you open with there? Four fifty. Smoke show four fifty for speed work, everyone. That's exactly what the fucking judge said. He's like, So are you gonna put some weight on the bar? <laughs> That's what I thought when I saw it. I was like, What the hell are we doing here? This is speed work. And then four eighty five, which I had was a PR in the gym, so I was like, fuck it, we'll see if we can get it on the platform. Mm -hmm. then I played it conservative because I wanted to go three for three because I didn't want to go fucking five for nine right <laughs> I don't know why but not having that day yeah only did I go for three three for three they were all three white lights well, that was cool nice together on the last one that I could actually maybe do this stupid shit which was 500 right you pulled 500 501 dude 501 <laughs> give him the one <laughs> 27 and a half nice let's go for a grand total of? I think it's like 1256 or something. 1256. 570. So 1500, not that far. No, I think 1350 is probably. Very realistic. Yeah. I like learn how to strain and actually move heavyweight. Yeah. That's not like a skill or anything. Come on. What are you talking about? Moving heavyweight? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I didn't think I could move what I did that day, and it just moved like a feather, so that's interesting. Yeah. I, I think it's funny how kids are like, they're like, yeah, I, my, this is my one rep max. This is my one rep max. I'm like, you don't know what a true one rep max is. Like, it was probably right. hard for you, but it probably wasn't a true one rep max, to be really honest. They're like, well, what should it be? And I'm like, well, you should be afraid that the bar is about to hurt you. If you're not, if you're and not, it's like a 10 second strain to get it done. Yeah. If you're not concerned that the bar is not going to make it to the top, you didn't truly do a one rep max. So if, like they'll, they'll pull like a little smooth little bench press. And I'm like, yeah, that was like half a second. What are you, t that's not your one rep max. You just don't know how to, sh you just don't know how to strain yet. Like you don't. Right. So yeah, that'd be like me thinking when I did in competition is all like, you know, like, no, there's no, there's, there's more, more to think. Yeah. There's more, which is cool to think about. Cause it's there. Just got to figure out how to get there. The peaking thing, man. You understand how to peak? Holy shit. Well, I don't know that a lot of people even understand what the term peaking even means. 
because possibly they're po- they're possibly overtraining their entire life, so or they're undertraining their entire life, so there is no peak. Right. But it sounds like you found a way to hit the nail on the head with the tapering down and the peaking phase, so that was cool. I mean, I just took some of Swede's ideas and just expanded upon them. Yeah. What did you? What does he? What is his like comparative to like a West Side barbell peaker taper or? Is this similar, different? Uh, it's completely different. Yeah. Westside doesn't even really have like a peaking thing. Kind of, they have like the Circa Max. The Circa Max things. stuff, yeah. But there's not a lot of people out there that are going to need, even need that by far. Like they, there's no one going to need 600 pounds of band tension or whatever it is they're doing. Yeah. The, yeah. So. Did but you, no, just, you just go through a, a, micro, a mesocycle where you're, you know, like do 90% one week. Or one micro cycle and then 95 or like you'll test your new max. Then you'll do 95% of that max. Then you'll do drop down to like 80% and then do like a day of speed work. Gotcha. Slowly. I just added more rest days to it. And then the way I do my accessories is much different. So I just used his fifth set protocols and his MSM protocols. Gotcha. Along with the, the like structure of the. That last mesocycle for peaking. And you changed the accessories to be what? More metabolic? Exactly what he said not to do. And I did the ones for the next exercise. <laughs> so what does he say but you yes, shouldn't do? That you, Well, you know how most people do exercises. They just do the same like muscle groups that you just hit on the movement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do those the day before, the workout before. Right. To prepare them. Yeah, because I use AMPK. Right. Stimulus. But most people don't know what AMPK is either, so they don't understand I mean, how you, nutrients... you want to know? I'll tell you what AMPK is. Nutrients get shoved into the tissue. <clears throat> Long dramatic pause. Yeah, I had to get my notes, dude. Fuck dramatic off. pause for effect, everyone. Right. <laughs> so AMPK, short for adenosine monophosphate activated protein kinase. It's an enzyme that plays a crucial role in regulating energy metabolism in the body. It acts as a master regulator, sensing and responding to changes in cellular energy levels. When cellular energy is low, AMPK is activated to promote energy production and maintain energy balance. AMPK activation has several benefits for the body, including enhanced energy production. AMPK stimulates the breakdown of glucose and fatty acids, increasing energy availability for cellular processes. Improved glucose uptake, AMPK activation enhances insulin sensitivity, facilitating uptake of glucose into cells, helping to maintain stable blood sugar levels. Three, uh, it increases fat burning. AMPK promotes the breakdown of stored fats, lipolysis, I believe is how you say it, and boosts fatty acid oxidation, aiding in the weight management and fat loss. Muscle adaptation, AMPK activation helps promote muscle adaptation by increasing the number and function of mitochondria. The cell powerhouse is responsible for energy production, and it also helps with anti-inflammatory effects. So AMPK has an anti-inflammatory properties and can help suppress inflammation in various tissues and organs. So using protocols to elicit that, you're not necessarily doing damage to the tissue before you use it. You're actually priming it to do more work later. Right. I like the part about the that it reduces the amount of inflammation that you have, especially leading up to a, a peaking cycle. It seems like that would be a pretty good idea to do. Keep inflammation low, stress on the body low. I mean, well, you do it all the time. How does it feel? Uh, like I'm a large human being when it's done. You get a pretty sweet pump, right? <laughs> it's pretty nice. Yeah, but then I like it the day. I, I feel it the day after, like what you're talking about, or the day that I need it. For the next upper body, like if I'm doing a lower and I do upper body accessories, then I feel like when I get to Wednesday to do my main work for my upper body, I feel like I can contract really hard. Right. Almost like things start working synergistically and building upon each other. Like conjugation. I mean, yeah, there is some conjugation in there. There is a bit of that. So that's what I do for the accessories, which is different than... Yep. Most people even realize it's possible with accessories, I think. I don't know. Maybe they know. Maybe they don't know. Louis was figuring it out. That's why he had you do so much band work. (laughs) 
Yeah, just do four sets of 100 real quick. Go so ahead. for the conjugate people, the band work is AMPK work. Mm -hmm. It's almost impossible to not make an AMPK work. Just keep the short rest periods. Yeah, he just wasn't doing anything with tempo, though. So that's why the rep no. numbers are probably so high. Correct. Yeah, so that's where I think a lot of that gets lost in translation. Everybody's like, holy God, why is he doing four sets of 100? Well, it's just time under tension. It's just time really, under you tension. could do 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off and right. probably achieve the same thing. Right. So like if you're repping out a hundred reps, but your tempo's through the roof, it's probably 40 seconds of total work, which is like what AMPK can get you if you do 12 reps with the correct tempo. That's what I tell well, people. Eliciting the same AMPK stimulus. Right. And it doesn't matter because it's the tension that's sending that signal. Right. So as long as you're cumulatively creating tension for that whole time, right. And not like having such sloppy form that the tension is completely disappearing. Right be able to create that stimulus yep yep i'll just write having that. a controlled tempo right makes it so that you have consistent tension and then like i use it as a barrier to make sure that people don't go too heavy mm -hmm. right like if i can control the tempo i can tell you what portions of the movement i want you to spend more time in i've started writing it as like seconds and for kids because they are terrible at matching tempo so it's like find a way that you can do this for 40 seconds of duration to where it doesn't like if you stop within that time period like uh, do it control do it for 40 seconds and do a weight that's not completely like killing you while you're doing it that seems to get a better result still too heavy. Sure. yeah they always have to learn and back down for sure because they always load up the bar but i write it every which way i think i can go light <laughs> take this tempo here's the timer for you Here's this. I liked the uh, way once that... Once again, uh, here's your RPE. Here's your RIR. Yeah, here's yeah, like, yeah. Well, I don't know what other fucking pieces of information you need me to give you. I like <laughs> the way that uh, N1 wrote it. It's like pick a weight that you could do 20 reps with easily. You know Nobody knows that, though. I tried that in the beginning. It didn't work? No, fuck no. <laughs> I'd, it'd be like IRM for eight, right? And it's like pick a weight you can do for 16 reps. And I'm like... These people don't fucking know. They're like, well, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm like, <laughs> that's that's the probably the most asked me. question I get in the gym. What should, what weight should I use? What, what, what weight should, should I use? use? What should I do? What am I? What what it's do I weigh? Always. Like, it's I'm like you don't know until you know. Like read the thing, read the description, just figure it out. That's the whole point. This is your training. You have to start to learn how I'm to like, self-regulate. You're, you're gonna fuck up and grab the wrong weight. So just go grab one. Just put it Try on to there. Follow the yeah. protocol, protocol, and if you or make it to the second set and go, oh shit, you're gonna learn. Just keep dropping that weight down. Yeah, you're gonna learn real fast. I tell them that you're gonna learn real fast. I can't hold I like, your hand. I like giving it to people with the bands. You can't really fuck that up. Like, no, but it's funny to watch people do like AMPK work and put like a purple or a green band on there and then try to hold that tempo. And I'm like, that's not happening. But I let them. I let them do it because I'm like, yeah, go for it. Just try. Well, the it. bands, you're not gonna do any real damage, which is nice. Yeah. And it's also worse when you get to that shortened range, though, with the bands. Like we've oh, talked yeah, about it that. It exponentially gets harder. <laughs> it's just squeezing the piss out of you when you get there. I have my older clients use the bands. I got I, I got called out the other day. I said my clients didn't want to do bands because they felt like they were part of the Silver Sneakers program. I was like, okay, well, like, well, that's not why I'm using them, but sure. You're all, if you want to donate to the fund to get me a functional trainer so we don't have to use the bands right. anymore, feel free. That's what I showed him. I was like, it's well, $8,000. Yeah. I was like, I'd rather have this. And I showed him one of the cheaper ones, like the Titan one or no, something. Show him the fucking prime fitness one. Oh God. If you're going to lobby for people's money, be like, I want this $9,000. motherfucker. Yeah. They're like, that's the cheapest one. I'm like, yeah, that's the cheapest one. $2,500. For yeah. <laughs> a commercial size. Yeah, probably. Well, uh, yeah, like Titans is 25, Reps is 25 or something. And that those are like when you search functional trainer, those are the ones that come up first. So those are like home ones. Those aren't even. Yeah. The stacks aren't good enough for them. No. Although I was impressed that Titan came out with like the 300 pound lap pull down stack. I was like, oh, okay. Copy Elite FTS, man. Not too shabby. Oh, man. Elite FTS. Amazing company, by the way. Fantastic company. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everything I, I've ever gotten from there has been smooth, easy, and fast. Never had an issue. Never had. An, I've never. I every bit of like Elite FTS gear I have, which is a few bars basically, and some other stuff has just been fantastic. Like I was the only one at the meet with Elite FTS singlet and shit. I was the only one rocking Elite. Everyone's done their SPD bullshit. 
SPD. What have you? I don't know what that is. Squat bench deadlift. Oh, oh that's like a company. You know, I didn't know the that company like... that sponsors the world's strongest man. I have no idea. Clearly, <laughs> that's not a realm Clearly. that I'm very familiar with. Dude, explain this to me. Uh-huh. On Instagram, the two posts I did about competing have gotten me more likes than any other posts of my entire Instagram. People history. love to see your success. People like to see that stuff, but they don't want to read anything about how to make themselves better. No, because they think they have it all figured out. What are you talking oh. about? Good. What? Why should I Good listen to this point. guy tell me how to figure things out when I already know <clears throat> what I'm doing? I just want to clap for you when you succeed. I don't care if you tell me what to do. You can't tell me what to do. I know all. I'm not. I'm not telling anyone what to do. I just give them suggestions. That's telling. That's in their <clears throat> in their brains. That's you telling them exactly what they're doing wrong and what they should do. I don't think so. Not the way I usually write those things. But maybe. You just don't understand people very well. I don't know. Sure. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand losers that well. Oh, shots fired. <laughs> All right, everyone have a wonderful day. That is the end of the podcast. We've been forever canceled because Alex just called everyone a loser. I didn't call everyone a loser. If you don't listen to his pod or if you don't read his things, you are also a loser. I'm not saying that either. I'm just saying. Yeah. The I, discrepancy in. Like, like yesterday I got the jumping thing, got me 40 likes or something. And I, my numbers have been around 20 since then. So it's like, it got over 500 plays and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, like people like to so see. This was all my followers. This didn't reach anybody new. Oh, it didn't? No. Maybe that's what people, they're just, <laughs> they're just lurkers then until they see. Yeah, apparently succeed. like everyone just lurks and doesn't want me to know that they look at my shit, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I think the real tell is like when you look at your stories and see how many people have like clicked on your story. And I'm like, look at all you people clicking on my story. Why can't you just click like on my post? Like, you speaking of which, of- allegedly they want me to do strongman stuff, but yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like, so no more, no more powerlifting for a while. Uh, not for a few weeks. Mm. But strongman at the end of the week. Here we go. <laughs> Where's the competition at? That's in Cheyenne. That's a trip. That's about 40 minutes. Wait, that's only 40 minutes from you? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. That's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. It's not terrible. Yeah. Alex <laughs> lifts one log and he asks people if he should go to Strongman, and the whole world's <laughs> like, yeah, do it. <laughs> right. It's incredible. I'm going to go lift a log today and see if I get the same response. Dude, that thing was 95 pounds. I didn't expect it to go up so snappy. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go lift an actual log, though. I'm just gonna go out and find a tree and lift it up and be like, "I'm gonna create my own strongman, power man thing." I'm gonna. It's like a combination. Strongman, power man thing. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's called power man. We're gonna call it power man. It's just gonna be a cross between power lifting and and strongman. It's gonna be a a big cross. You have to squat, deadlift, and bench within a thirty second time interval, and then go lift some heavy trees. Sounds terrible. That's just the start of the sport. We'll work out the details later. We'll see how strong you really are. Details later. (laughs) See how strong you really are. Yeah. What if I went to the strongman and got another podium? Two weekends in a row. Sounds like people would just go nuts. I don't think they'd give me any more money. I don't. I don't think anything cool would happen because of it. It's garbage. It's unbelievable. I don't know about it's garbage, but I just don't think anything. Give this man your money already, guys. He's working hard. He's proving that you don't have to feel like trash at a leading up to a powerlifting meet. You don't have to feel like trash after. And even so, you're ready to go just what, willy-nilly walk into a strongman competition. Like, what more do you people want? This man has all the secrets, okay? I don't have all the secrets. I just got a good system. That's all. Well, 13 years of experience and practice gets you to a that's pretty good not, system. That's not why. It's the people I learned from. It has nothing to do with it. Well, me. 13 years of experience is what I'm saying. You've done yeah, a, lot, well, a lot of research. That's fair. I just self application. I got to make friends with really cool people that are super smart. That's mostly. Yeah. Speaking of, you said you had a wonderful meeting with <clears throat> John Quint and Mr. Shivers today. Yeah, we had our little Substack meeting thing. That's pretty sweet. This guy's in on all the cool stuff, guys. I'm telling you. I don't know. Again, I don't know what you're waiting for. Al Goal Performance at Instagram. Let's go. <laughs> there Sign you go. Up. Nice plug. Sign up good. today. <laughs> There's a Twitter and Substack as well, and YouTube, and. Also, if you'd like whatever service your mom uses as well, if you'd like a better name, yeah, Facebook. He's probably on Facebook too. He just... No, I got banned from that a long time ago. Oh, yeah, just, never mind the shadow base. I just, I just stay away. No, I got legit banned from Facebook. Oh, like, he's they not banned even... my fucking IP address. Oh no, oh, I would make no. new email addresses and I'd log in and it'd be like, "You are banned." I'm like, 
Cool. Yep. What the fuck? All because <laughs> I didn't verify an email address before I tried to pay for an ad. I'd take it to the big wigs. And ever since then, Instagram just mocks me whenever I look at my notifications with, you have one paid promotion or one unpaid promotion. No, <laughs> I can't like get rid of it. Oh, no. Like, nice, guys. This is This is legit. Come on, guys. Get it figured out for the man. Yeah. Uh, uh Uh-oh. But yeah, I got to listen to uh, Dr. Shivers. John didn't really talk much today, but Shivers told us about reactive strength, which is pretty sweet. What do you think reactive strength is? What's your definition? Well, I I would always refer back to like whatever the books say, which is the shock method. That's how you develop reactive strength. That's not what I asked you, motherfucker. I said, what do you think it is? The stretch shortening cycle. We have to define what it is before we can talk about how to train it, don't we? Uh, I think it's the ability to utilize the stretch shortening cycle to a greater capacity. Okay. That's, that, that would be what I would explain I it mean, to be. Reactive strength definitely probably has something to do with the stretch shortening cycle, mm-hmm. right? And what is, what is the stretch shortening cycle? Well, it's when a muscle lengthens and then rapidly shortens and then rapidly lengthens again. So what like plyometric, think plyometric. And people do what plyometrics. Like, uh, what? like what, what does plyometric mean? Well, what's a plyometric? What are you talking about? Uh, plyometric is like, well, you can do a lot of different plyometric variations. Concentric, let's some, eccentric. Let's hear some examples. Um, so like a depth, movement. a depth drop would be a depth drop or... A depth drop or a depth jump. Depth jump, sorry. Depth drop would be something different. That's where you're just landing, right? right. Um, so you have to make short contact with said ob- some object yeah and like basically bounce off of it right for the sh- yep. stretch shortening cycle to work and there's a certain specific time frame that it has to occur within so like i know the book super training talks about how the, re- the reactive the re- reactive strength index has to be within like 0.25 seconds or something like that or the quality isn't actually even being trained right. or produced have you, have you ever heard about the the slower one so you have the depth jump which is the really fast one right do you mm-hmm. know what the slower ones are are you talking about like depth drops? No, like a box jump. Like a box jump? The thing about uh, the box jump is it's a slower stretch shortening cycle. Doesn't happen as fast. They're right. Still doing the same thing, right? Right. So they have two different variations of that stretch shortening cycle. Right. The really rapid ones you would be have to be more advanced to do than the sh- slower ones. Right. Thing. Right. Sense. Right. So that's that's what reactive strength is, but how do you what do you think controls reactive strength? Like, how do you produce reactive strength? I think you have to be, your tendons have to be more elastic. The elasticity of your tendons, correct? Yeah. But does the nervous system play a role, you think? Well, yeah, I would have to say so, because the connection has to be sent pretty quickly, pretty rapidly. What have I told you that it happens so fast that the nervous system doesn't even register? Well, that don't happening? The, are we talking about, like, joints, joints are the first thing that experience... Like what the actual we're talking about is. the stretch shortening cycle that you're talking about mm-hmm. to make reactive that what we measure as reactive strength right? right and they usually measure it in what you're talking about is whatever meters per second or right. whatever the fuck time. that is and just it, time. it's up to three yeah usually right and three is I think really slow mm-hmm. if I remember correctly mm-hmm. so if you're measuring that how do you train your body to do that faster. Good question. <laughs> what did they say? <laughs> well, like the common idea is that somehow the nervous system plays a role. But if what happens if I told you that it happens so fast, the nervous system doesn't register any of that happening. It doesn't even. What what, what leaves that to be to be what? What do we train then? Oh God, good question. A lot of people would think that it's the nervous system, but what is it? Well, there's just tissue is left, right? Like we have to train the tissue. You have to train the tissue to be what? Elastic. Mm, opposite of that. Really? Stiffness. Because mm. what is what is that reactive strength? It is absorbing an eccentric, right? As fast as it can. Right. And then reversing it. Okay. So if you were elastic in doing that, would that would that have a good ability to rebound? I guess I'm looking okay. at it. I'm using the I'm just right. I'm saying like the the ability for the tendon to rebound quickly. Would be that, that's actually stiffness, right? Okay, so I'm just that using the sense. wrong. I'm wrong. I'm on the wrong term. My bad. <laughs> but that's stiffness, though, right? right. Absorbing that force, right? That stiffness of the connective tissue mm-hmm. 
is what's going to allow you to generate more reactive strength. Right. Does that make sense? Right. So, like, just doing things quickly isn't necessarily going to allow that tissue to allow more force production to be made from it. Right. Does that make sense? Is that why sprints would be very important to incorporate into your training to actually train that type of stiffness? Depends on how, how evolved you are. Mm-hmm. So, like, what would be... Do you think you can do that with most people? You just throw them in sprints? No, no, no. I think you'd have to build up some resiliency before you did that. Right. So you would need some sort of progression. Right. Right. And so reactive strength being a component of that length loading progression, right? So how would you do that? You would, what's a, what's a really basic way you can get people to load tissue in a lengthened position? Squat. Even more basic than that. Jump. So wait, well, no, wait, no, way, way, way down. Way down. What's way like down. the first thing you should do with anyone? Just stretch? Close. <laughs> a little bit more than that. Uh, oh, a little more, so I went too far this below. The actual science behind strength and conditioning. What's like the first strength thing you do? What is like the entry level thing that you do? I don't know what path you're trying isometrics, to take. Isometrics, Jesus Christ. Bro. Oh, he's isometrics. I didn't I wasn't going down the right we're, path. I thought I thought we were yeah, talking about we're exercise. Creating strength. Mm-hmm. No, well, we're not talking isometrics about isometrics. We, we don't talk about exercise. What are we? Some fucking yeah. exercise coaches? Well, no, create, we're strength coaches, bro. So isometrics create tendon resiliency. So what would be the easiest way for you to lengthen and load tendons, or in this case, connective tissue mm -hmm. at the lowest level possible? do these fucking things every day tails rails there you go <laughs> right progressive I was just angular thinking exercise. isometric Sorry. loading i'm with you it is a fucking exercise well it's yeah. the most basic one you can do right but like, this I, is why everybody I'm not, needs i don't to see do it, it as an exercise that's what i was saying so i was on the wrong path as you How i just you see it as to, a, what do you i see it as active stretching that's just what the term comes to my brain that's not a fucking thing you're, you're literally strength training at end range is what you're doing. Yeah. That's what it is. Right? Try convincing so that would people be that. A way for you to well, then what? So if if reactive strength is in the tissue and you need to lengthen and load that tissue, well then everybody could start with something to do that, right? Right. So you go from like the static version to so you'd have angle specific isometrics, mm -hmm. right? So whatever you're trying to make them better. Then you do dynamic isometrics. Mm -hmm. You know more of that. And then you have eccentrics. And then you have EQI stuff. And then you have overspeed eccentrics. And then finally plyometrics. Right? But if you can't have someone do plyometrics, you have to go through this checklist before they should be even attempting to do any of that shit. Right. Because right? if you're not creating the correct tissue, you're not going to get the adaptations to build more of that reactive strength. Well, I feel like the body will just break down regardless. Like it'll quit on you when you try to do plyometrics because you're not going to be able to absorb that amount of force anyway. So the precursors to that obviously are incredibly important before you just throw someone under a plyometric. I see people do it all the time. <laughs> We're going to do some depth jumps today randomly. Uh, all kinds of random shit all the time. Mm -hmm. Here's another fun fact. Did you know tissue turns over every 21 days? It turns over. Explain. Cells and stuff. Are re they've revamped everything. Hmm. No, I did not know that. So, like, if you tear something mm -hmm. and you start giving it input to start building the correct tissue, right? Three weeks later, it will have increased that amount. Oh, okay. So you have tendons that, if you look at them under microscope or whatever, they have different qualities to them, right? Right. Like if you have a torn one, for example, you started doing these types of progressions on it, mm -hmm. you know, every three weeks you would see a change from like literally dead tissue to like usable tissue. Active tissue. Yeah. Like stuff that's really actually doing something. Mm -hmm. And that you can actually absorb a lot of force with and that it can actually handle stress. Okay. That's why. So when my when I asked you the question about the lady that I have with the torn rotator cuff, that would make sense then for her to start using those type of things, using pails and rails like that 
to get that tissue to actually become more more active tissue is that kind of what you're saying yeah your brain doesn't know anything is there until you tell it that it's there right so if nothing's happening to an injured area your body will send cells there and it'll create scar tissue because there's no input nothing's happening right yeah we're products of the environment it's got to be used mm -hmm. but yeah so you know when someone's like, well, I did this X amount of years ago and I fucking can't do anything because I don't have this. And it's like, well, no, there's something there. It's got to reprogram and, the brain to use it. Well, and we can like kind of change it. The older mm -hmm. you get, the harder it becomes and the more work you have to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that it's not worth doing work. Well, no, because you'll feel infinitely better once you actually get to that point, too. But people, they can cut me open and give me a new socket. Yeah, well... No, oh, thanks. I'm going to save the scalpels for something else. I don't want to do that. You don't want to be cut open? No. No, I don't no. want to be cut open. Why? I don't think anybody wants to be cut open. Well, I mean, I think they do because the doctors tell them that there's no other choice, no other option. But hey. Do with it what you will, I guess, if you want to be cut open. Sure. All right, trying to make sure the computer doesn't die. Can't can't convince people to not get cut open, or you try to show them that there's a better way. I don't know. Well, nobody wants to work. <laughs> That's that hard. Too hard. It's hard. Work sucks. I want to lift this. Well, do some work. I want to do this. Well, you take some time. It's a interesting world we live in. Yeah, the the react. That's interesting. That. So do they believe that like pails and rails can build reactive strength? Is that kind of what you're boiling this down to? I mean, it's the very first layer of it. Okay. There's seven more steps. <laughs> Golly. So reactive strength isn't as easy as just like, because everything you read in the books, obviously, like it immediately goes to like, oh, plyometrics, shock methods, things like well, I that. I think those definitely help, but it's just what happens when somebody's not at a level to do any of that. Right. So you don't think that we just didn't have that level of knowledge to build the precursor things to go. We didn't have the methods to build those type of things before we got to plyometrics, like in right. the past, right? So you're yeah, saying... I'm sure plyometrics, definitely. They, they clearly work. They're the top of this pyramid. What about eccentric isometrics? Eccentric guys, What the <laughs> fuck is that? <laughs> Joel Seedman plug. Fuck that guy. It's not in the steps. Hey, Joel Seedman, if you ever hear this podcast, go fuck yourself. <laughs> it's not in the steps? Come on. <laughs> make a clip of that mm, there you go send it to him tag him in it dude i posted something on my story today that was from my twitter thread mm -hmm. about lactate training mm -hmm. i saw right? that and it said that it, i was reported as false because it had something to do with joe biden I'm like what none of this had anything to do with joe biden what yeah it was fucked up instagram just have to get me man we're not even this is what it said it's sleepy said, joe Mental resilience. Lactate training is not just about physical gains. It builds mental resilience too. Pushing through the discomfort of high intensity workouts challenges your limits, fosters mental toughness, and cultivates a mindset that can tackle any obstacle that comes your way. I got hmm. flagged. Interesting. Or something about I don't fucking know. They're watching. But basically, yeah. Instagram wants you to be a bunch of fucking pussies. They're watching Enjoy that. I don't give a fuck. I have nothing worth watching government is on to you alex sorry if they are watching me i should take more dick pics that's what <laughs> here you go sorry about you send those on the gram you'll get flagged <laughs> probably not i just well, saw yeah, that, not, today that they're fostering pedophiles on instagram and making it so that they can access each other wait easier. what yeah through hashtags and shit like that was happening on twitter before that elon got rid of oh my god it's on instagram now so I'm sure if I wanted to show little kids my wee wee, they'd fucking love me on Instagram. That's terrible, dude. What the heck? What are we doing, world? It's fucked. That's what that's what we're doing. That's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, didn't you know the most powerful people in the world are pedophilias? Have you seen the thing the the term they've tried to coin to make it acceptable? No. You haven't. You don't know about I don't about watch the news very much. I don't watch the news either. I, I just find the shit out on Twitter the, yeah, because it's absolutely asinine. This is why I don't get on Twitter anymore. Yeah, but Elon, you know, 
He's he's on the side of justice. Well, that's great. I'm good for him. I still don't want to try to read about this stuff. I like happiness. You don't want to know what the term is? Sure. Everybody needs to know what the term is. Well, it's uh, yeah. It's a what? Map. A map? Uh-huh. What's the acronym? Minor Attracted Persons. Oh, good Lord. You fucking kidding? Right, right? What are we doing? What we're are we getting doing? getting ready to world? fucking, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. Why is everything so upset, acceptable now? Like, we have to stop accepting some things at some point. <laughs> that one's fucking bullshit. Like, you, if I ever hear somebody say that, I'm just going to punch them right in the fucking mouth. Yeah, that's terrible. I'm not even going to think twice about it. Like, no, that's terrible. Dunk. Sorry. Golly. This is what my daughter's going to grow up in one day. Lord help me. Right. Bless you for bringing another person into this world in this time and day. Oh, I wouldn't say bless us. I would just say pray for us. <laughs> well, you know. You know. In my world, that's like the same difference. <laughs> yeah, that, there you go. That's fair. <laughs> oh, no, dude. Yeah, it scares us a little bit. But, oh. Yeah, but you're you're in the Bible Belt, so you probably won't have to. Oh, yeah, because that's better. Yeah. Well, it's one extreme or the other. I would rather take your extreme, I think. I think I would, too. I, I mean, just firsthand speaking here but like still yeah there's some there's crazy people everywhere that's for uh, sure there's a lot of distrust i don't in think the church, these man. people that say this ridiculous shit on instagram are the majority i think they're the loud minority uh, i think they're becoming a loud majority it seems like no, falsified information loud. that's the problem yeah but loud information is falsified information most of the time and instagram don't flag those people twitter does twitter's well because they actually have somebody with a backbone running their company now did you see what happened last week with the fucking executive that flagged that movie? Uh-uh. So Matt Walsh released What is a Woman for free for 24 hours on Twitter. Mm. And someone on Twitter flagged it as hate speech and then resigned. Sweet. Real, real, uh, real, uh, <laughs> what's the word? I'm like, sounds like a coward. You, know, you, you know who these people are. It's the people that, you know, never won anything growing up and then Anytime you let them make the rules, they're the kids that changed it as you're playing the game. Right? Just those people grown up. Make your kids do hard things, folks. Let them learn through hard things and make them fail. And make them learn that it's okay to fail and learn from that failure. Please, Lord. Don't let them don't tell them they're right all the time. Like, do not you probably tell them they're wrong more often than not. That's what I usually Yes. Tell. Yes. Like it's <laughs> I just I, uh, I train kids, you know, like I'll do hitting lessons and things like that. I was telling my wife this other day, like, this dad stayed to watch these kids hit. And I was just like, yeah, it's fine. Like it's their first lesson. You can stay if you want, but I'd rather you leave to be really honest, but I, it's okay. So all these kids, they'll just start, like, I'll say something and then they'll be like, no. And I'm like, you're just going to tell an adult. No. Like what, what are we doing here? Like, and then like, you don't make I, them leave. I did. I was like, we're going to do things my way or you're just not going to come back. So you're either going to do this or you're not going to come back. It's up to you. And so they finally like looked at me like, oh, now he's being serious. And I'm like, when was not, when was like talking to adult, not a serious interaction. And I was like, I told, I told my wife, I was like, I want my kids to like treat adults that they are kid, I guess, to treat adults that they come into contact with more respect than what they would even treat you or I. Like, that's kind of the standard I want to uphold my kid to. Like, whatever is the standard in our home, it's like times 10 whenever you go and interact with other adults. Like, they're they're above us even. Like, what they say goes. Teachers, things like that. You know what I mean? Like, if we take her to lessons or something or eventually or she's in, like, a sport or whatever, like, treat your coach like they're the authority figure because they are the authority figure. Like, well, that's so right. gone. It's so gone. Like, we don't have that authoritative... Parents are no longer authorities. They're friends. You, their kids don't have to respect you. Like, they don't need to respect you. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, like, it's it's that whole like you have to give to whole, get like, or whatever. Yeah, no, they're they're the children. They give respect automatically, and then yeah, because you can't work back from a place of no authority. You can't like when there's no authority, you can't work back from that. It's just like the kid owns you. It's like cool. Well, this is my world, Trebek. So get out. <laughs> it's not gonna work for me. Yeah, I've kicked multiple kids out and they look at, it's so funny when you kick them out of the gym and they're like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, go home. Like, I'm I'm done with you. Like, get out of here. This is not where you need to be. Sorry. 
They're like, are you really mad? I'm like, yeah, I'm really mad. Like, you need to leave. Get out of here. You didn't come here to do anything. Like, you didn't come here to train. You didn't come here to work hard. You came here to jack around and try to get attention. Get out. Like, this isn't the place for it. See you later. And How many that, takes you seriously do they? Um, Just everyone's friend. Some do. Some don't. Some respect some what friend. I do. Some respect what I do and some don't. Some have a respect for what I do and some don't. I'm not saying they don't respect what you do. They just they think you're your friend. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I've had to have some hard conversations before, but you gotta be work. an asshole from the beginning and then they wanna assume you're friends. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, <laughs> it's funny the like the kids that come to the that came to the garage, they get it. They get the culture, you know, that are th- still around today, which I have a handful of them that really still are around from the garage. Like those are the culture setters. They get it. And I told, uh, I have a little, I have some kids interning for me this summer, just helping out around the gym because they like being around and stuff. And I'm like, nice. How does it feel to have slaves? <laughs> it's fun. It's really fun. No, <laughs> he's, they're good kids. Jake, Jake's awesome. Arlie's, Arlie will be here next month. So he'll be great too, but he's trying to be a strength and conditioning coach. But anyway, like I told him like you, you, you create the culture you want. So you get to tolerate whatever you want. I don't know what you're going to tolerate when you have your gym one day, but you're going to have to live and die by what you tolerate. So if you tolerate to no, I'm just talking to these these oh. interns. I'm like, you're gonna have to tolerate whatever you tolerate. So just learn to accept what you can and can't accept, and then live with it. But you have to be consistent. That's for sure. I was gonna say I could probably be a little more tolerant. A little, <laughs> a, a little. Yeah, just a little, not vote, a lot. Vote in the comments below if you think Alex is intolerant. I'm very patient with people. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking a, I am. Oh, you wouldn't survive in my world then. No, they'd all be fucking fired because they fucking don't want to listen. My wife's always like, be nice, be nice, be Fuck nice. That, be nice. They want to fucking deal with the real world. Or they want to screw fucking... that. Nope. No more being nice. <laughs> Fuck my, that. My wife is Are you is trying so to make nice. winners or are you trying to make losers? No, I agree. I agree. I agree. She's like, we're a good balance, Alex. We're a good balance. Sure. Tell yourself whatever you want. Tell yourself whatever you want, he said. <laughs> Oh man, she's more competitive than I am. I don't know why she's saying that. Like, she's a freaking Division One softball player, for God's sake. She's way more competitive than I ever was. <laughs> yeah, it's All funny. Soft like marshmallows. When I'm feeding my child and like she's eating or whatever, I'm always like, "We got to keep eating. Got to keep eating. Power through. Power through. Got to finish the whole bottle, right? <laughs> like, let's go. Let's go. 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 Yeah. Go. go, go. Like we're already training. Like we got to be the best, even if it's just eating our dang freaking milk. <laughs> uh. Oh man, probably why I'm single. I have too much, I have too many expectations. <sighs> I don't know. My dad had a lot of expectations, and I worked. I turned out all right. So you mean I, like pressure makes you better? I oh. like I like standards. I like expectations. I like putting pressure on myself. I like competing with myself. I like pushing people. Like I just that's the environment that I like to be in. I don't know. It's because I've always known that, but I think know. that's called success. Why? I guess. Yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't know if I've ever been real successful. I mean, what I do now feels like I have a sense of success, but my athletic career wasn't anything overwhelmingly successful, but you also didn't know what the fuck you were doing. True. And I got to the level that I did. So that was cool. But, but we won wherever I was at. And I'm not saying it was because of me solely, obviously not, but it takes more than just one person in baseball. But like we all, I liked being around people that wanted to be good. Like we always wanted to be good and push ourselves. We hated losing. I think like that's I just something. mentioned all the qualities you just listed were basically success. Yeah. That's we're lo- success. We're losing that quality too. People don't hate to lose anymore. Like I hate losing. Losing is bullshit. I hate it. God, I hate it so much. It's even worse when you blow it yourself, like on the platform. That's a def like I like sports like that, that that it's all on you. you it's know, the first I, sport I've played like that. Yeah. It's just on you. Like, you can't blame anyone else. Like yeah. That's why I like golf so much. It's just me. It's like I hit a bad shot. I can't. Well, maybe put... I'll go hit some golf balls today. It's pretty nice out. Is it nice out there finally? Mm-hmm. 75, 65? 73 and sunny, baby. Oh, God. That's beautiful. We're moving to Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> we can tolerate the winters for that kind of summer. Summer. Uh, sure. We have one month where it's just like 90 and to 100 all the time. So. Uh, but it's, it's dry. It's not humid. Yeah, I can handle that. I can handle that. Yeah. I like combat sports. I want my daughter to wrestle. <laughs> I would like to do some jujitsu at some point. Yeah. 
once I know my shoulder isn't going to pop out with, once I get enough relative strength in my shoulder. Oh, shout out relative strength. Hashtag relative strength. I mean, the way they defined it, man, is different than what everybody else defines it as. And it made a lot of sense. They re- Relative strength? They define relative yeah. strength differently? What I was just telling you, it doesn't have anything to do with the nervous system. It's all about the connective tissue. Hmm. So they just de- they define anything about that. Yeah, they define all the capacities differently than other people define them in books. Then, well, I mean, that's what this whole thing is—is is about going through their definition of absolute strength, which is the same as what they say in the books. Is that and, the FRS model? Is that what they're, they're talking about? No, this is John and Michael's. Oh, okay. John and Doctor Shivers' own absolute model. They're just taking their these concepts that they've learned and putting it into their their I- ideology of what they believe. What right. they've learned. So like we started with learning joint function, and then we learned absolute strength, and then reactive strength, and then we're going to learn speed strength. Those are the four components to their model. Got you. So if I subscribe to their sub stack, are those all watchable? Could I go back and watch those? Yeah, if you do the, the $10 a month thing. Yeah, that's I could go back and watch those things. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, $10 a month is now leaving our account, just so you know. Well, uh, I'm hoping I can make friends with them so we can get them on the podcast. That'd be great. Come on now. Sweeten the deal here. Let's go. I don't know if Shivers would do it, but I think John might do it. I bet John would. John seems Maybe. like a pretty person. He did one with his sister, so I'm thinking it's a possibility. <laughs> he did one also on, he was on the West Side podcast with yeah. Fina. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. That was a good episode. I, I don't know that. that either of them are what you would consider extroverted. Uh, no, I think to have that level of thinking capacity, your extrovertacy or whatever, however you want to say that is just, it can't, it has to be fairly lacking. You have to be pretty introverted to think at that level, I think. And they're like so smart that people ask them questions and because they don't like understand what it is they're asking, then the people feel really dumb. Yeah, exactly. Asking the question. Now you know how I feel with you, you <laughs> jackass. And I'm just like, what, what's going on here? Like you're sitting here asking me these questions like, what is this? What is this? I'm like, I don't I'm trying to probe it out no. of you so you no, can it's think good. of it. That's good. It makes me think. I like that. You're challenging me. Well done. If, if anyone ever thinks they know something, just ask them why five different times in a row, and you'll really find out how they'll much they know about whatever they're talking They'll rethink it. About. They're like, oh, yeah. wait a minute. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. Because you go, why? Well, but why? I do that with books but a why? lot. Yeah, People but, are like, why? why am I doing this? And I'm like, because it's in this book, and I read about it, and I think it will work. Yeah, but why? Uh, because, because you see, like, are way smarter. Yeah, because I just do what these people <laughs> tell me. Because I didn't make up any of this stuff. I just try to use what they have. So, right. It's so funny. Uh, we were do- we're doing a couple of my clients are doing some post exhaustive stuff or pre exhaustive, however you want to call it, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they're much. They're very different. There's not. They're not the same thing. What is it? Post exhaustive? The one where well, you? It depends. How did you set it up? Well, I did it with multi joint. With I did a multi joint move and then a single joint exercise after, which is post exhaustive. I don't know Look, that it works that in, way, but yeah. It's in super training, mother fricker. I, I understand that, but as if you go down the N1 route, which elaborates on that a lot more. Which what, both of them or pre or post? They do both, post exhaust or pre exhaust. So tell me what, tell me what post exhaust is then comparatively. It would be like your first movement could be more of a middle resistance profile mm-hmm. then that second movement becomes more of whatever it is you're trying to elicit right if it's a metabolic post exhaust well then the post one would be more shortened shortened position yep right if it was like a hypertrophy post exhaust it'd be more lengthened yep so we're sense. doing we're doing metabolic i'm using like a shortened position you're using a multi-joint movement with it that doesn't really but you're not getting much pre-exhaust that way is all i'm saying I wouldn't pre exhaust it even if it's in the lengthened position, you don't think? A little bit, but if it's a multi joint movement, you're not using just that tissue. You know no, saying? correct. But I can maximally stimulate that tissue if I'm using a squat variation. You know what I mean? Not compared to a fucking leg extension or a, a hack squat or a leg press. I don't have a leg, the hack squat or a leg press. I'm doing, I'm working with what I got, guy. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine then. Then yeah. say that. Yeah, I'm working with what I have. So, so you're like, doing a squat first and then you're doing what for the quads? Uh, like a and actually, the split extension. squat would probably be more stimulation than probably that. would be. You're right. We could try that next. Good, good. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for giving me the next go round with yeah. modifying the program a little bit. But we do. Dude, I did some single leg RDLs yesterday. Yeah, I saw that. My ass is fucked up. <laughs> Just fired it up. 
Dude, Dude so, it, they're so hard. Single leg more thing always those does two, that. I, those two workouts that I did last few days than I am from that fucking meet. How about those single arm tricep or tricep extensions? Those are pretty good pump. I like those. Yeah, dude. Single leg anything always just I just found those people. in the exercise library. Yeah, I keep scrolling through. They've added a lot of stuff. I'm just kind of like squirreling with it every now I think and I then. I forgot to. Did I make a video for it yesterday? Maybe I did. Yeah, you did. Mm-hmm. No, for my exercise library. Did I roll across your YouTube shorts. Uh, I haven't been on YouTube. Oh, I got to respond to somebody's calf raise comment. By the way. Oh no! What happened? Oh, they're just telling me that they like they hit calves every day, but theirs won't won't grow. And I wanted to find like a nice way to like point out to them that maybe those two things are connected. There's multiple ways that that could hit the calf muscle. Well, no, like if you're doing them every day and nothing's happening, maybe maybe not hit them every day. Maybe not do them every day. Yeah. Right. What are you That'll talking about? Correct. You can't do triceps every day, and they'll just grow, 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 grow. Come I mean, on. if you hit different divisions, maybe. People don't even know that there's different divisions. They think it's just the one muscle. It's, it's like, tricep. no, there's three. <laughs> Why do you think we do so many different variations? Did you, That's do you know how the, many divisions of the quad there are technically? Is there more than four? Really? Yes. Really? This I didn't know. New information. Empty. Five. Really? Just another attachment? Yeah. What do they consider to be the fifth attachment then? I don't remember. Okay, so you don't even know. Part of the rec fem. Well, you have like rec fem, right? Which is at the hip and the knee. And then you have hip and knee, four other parts of the quad. And then like your hamstrings actually have four divisions instead of three. Oh, so we have we have improperly named our hamstring and quads, everyone. We are going now to quads are now your hamstrings. Because the problem is you know when they're trying to make anatomy, it's on cadavers, which is not the issue. Right. So like it's really hard. And like the only way calves have discovered most of these things, you know how? Uh -uh. Bodybuilders. Yeah, because it so starts to you form can start that. To see, yeah, the different can, parts of them can see that division. Yeah, but he has a thing where he talks about the quad having five insertions. Interesting. All right, quads are now hamstrings, everyone, and no, it wouldn't be hamstrings; it'd be penty strings, penticeps. You said four, I thought five, like a pentagon. So the hamstrings have five, or the quads have five. The hamstrings have four. The quads have five. Right. So the hamstrings One are now more called in each quadriceps, is what I'm saying. We're, call, yeah, we're calling right. the hamstrings quadriceps. Quad strings. And the quads are now, uh, yeah, quad string. We have quad strings, everyone. We are renaming officially here on the Irrelevant Podcast, and then we have now what are the what's the word for five? Penty strings. Penticeps. Penticeps. We have penticeps and quad strings, everyone. We are officially naming them here. We have deemed it on the Irrelevant Podcast. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that that's necessarily true because I got it from Kaz. So. Well, if you start seeing in your programming that we are putting. If quad, more of you people strings. would use my affiliate link to go buy the N1 Practical for biomechanics, you would also have this information too. Shout out N1. Thanks, guys. Oh, I also got a I got a Flux Shoes affiliate code now too. This guy, he's just DMing everyone. He's trying to be I a complete they sponsored athlete. Fucker. Look at you. Good for you. That's nice. I, I haven't reached out to any of these places that give me deals. It was just like an actual legit invite instead of like the, hey, check your DMs. <laughs> like, sent you Dude, even my ex-endurance one, I didn't. They they reached out. I, I awesome. was like reaching out to people and the dude saw my profile and he's like, hey, you want to be a part of the team? I'm like, I don't know. What's it involved? You know. Where is the uh, where are they based out of? They're in Flagstaff. Oh, okay. They're all about America. So they got America. all the money oh, then. Yeah. Although I do like their supplements, man. They make a big difference. I need to get on the supplement train, apparently. <laughs> or I just need I to think figure it's out how to sleep absolutely again. Absolutely crucial. I need I to have more supplements today. I need some more taurine and magne- magnesium glycinate. Dude, I've loved hitting... a little L-theanine, and your guys' life will change. I promise you. Love hitting the magnesium after I train. Just absolutely love it. Absolutely. I should I should pose a thirty day challenge to all you fucks to do Take supplements. Magnesium, glycinate, mm-hmm. taurine, and mm-hmm. L-theanine post workout and before bed for thirty days. It'll change your life. life. Is not better. Yeah, it'll change your life. I try to get my clients on those for sure. Like, hey, I'm not sleeping well. Boom. Here you go. Hey, I don't feel good after I train. Boom. Here Boom. you go. It's easy. That, those are go tos. Easy peasy, little yeah. squeezy. I don't miss those ever. Yeah. So I I did, and it ruined like four months of my life. Hey, did you know that Ghost Energy has Alpha GPC in it? By the way, 
That doesn't surprise me. Everything has alpha GBC. No, this is the only energy drink that is consumed globally that has alpha GBC oh. in it. Well, here's a shameless plug. I use this stuff called Focus from X Endurance that can replace your energy drink and has alpha GPC in it. What else does it might have? Mine working. has beetroot extract. It also has 5 HTP. Dude, the All supplement the world is just an endless rabbit hole, I feel like. That's why I like this company I found because yeah. like, the shit I've gotten has been good. So it's just it I never to, ends. I tried to give someone the deep sleep supplement that mm-hmm. I have. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, I can't take it. It's got melatonin. And you look at the back of it and it's like two what, gram, two milligrams milligram? of melatonin, yeah. right? And then it's 1,596 milligrams of other things like GABA and 5-HTP. And I'm like... Wait, what? It's like a 1% or uh, a less even, than like 1%. Even. Yeah. <laughs> what are I was we like, doing here? Oh, okay. Then We're yeah, on like most, can't take it. most sleep aids melatonin is like half and half or something like that. It's crazy. I was just like, okay. I don't then think I can take that deep deep stuff though. Because if I go to the deep sleep and I don't hear my baby cry, we might be in trouble. <laughs> it's not that bad. You no, just wake up drooling. That's I'm all. just kidding. Just like. Uh, That's how I feel when I take the magnesium gly- glycinate and all that. And like, I take so much magnesium now. Yeah, it's so good for recovery. That endurance is magnesium mostly too. It gets me to chill out because I'm always pretty high strung with stress and what I'm thinking about and this and this Feel and that. that. Yeah, so it's just you need both. Hey, bro, chill. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Why I have an ongoing affair with Mary Jane. Yeah, yours is probably even higher than mine. If that's what you need to come back down all the time. Sometimes that's what it feels like. Yeah. Life can be a spiral. I mean, through my life, since I started doing it, I noticed the times that I don't, and I'm around people, they're like, what the fuck's wrong with you? I'm like, I guess I should probably go get high then. I'll Could be you back. imagine if your life didn't have training in it, though, at this point? Oh, I'd be miserable. Yeah. I probably your, would be dead. Your stress management would just be done for. Definitely be overweight, like I was on my way to being at yeah. one point in my life. Yeah. I would be the other way. I think I would be incredibly skinny. Right. Probably smoking all I'd the time. I'd probably be playing video games all the time still. Hey, speaking of video games, though, I did pick up Diablo 4. Shout out anybody who wants to play Diablo oh. 4. Hit me up. How is it? It's amazing. It's awesome. Have you played on your computer? Yeah, it's incredible. Holy uh, cow. Is I it want... still third-person view above? Like yes. Yes. It's just better, like just better graphics and everything. But it's like the old Diablo 2 feel. It's so great. I played Diablo 3, and I don't know. It just wasn't my gig. But it was also on console. Ugh. So fun. Diablo 2 is like one of the first PC games I ever played. You're so. saying I should buy this for my like desktop and just smoke you in it or what? Smoke me. Just party up. Let's go kill everything and save oh. the world. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> I didn't realize we Cooper, could Cooper's playing it. I shouted Cooper. I saw Cooper bought it, so I sent him a message. And I was like, are you trying to squat up, buddy? Let's go. So trying to get Cooper in my party with my brother and some other people. Cooper, if you ever decide to nosy your way over here and listen to this nonsense, party up, buddy. Yeah, it's a pretty fun game. Oh, man. <clears throat> my child is still asleep. Thank the Lord. Who are you writing the book to? My Lord. Dude, uh, shut up. <laughs> She's not that important. <laughs> As he says, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. fuck you. Never. If you must know, someone went by the gym to see me and I wasn't there. So I'm oh, no. Yeah, it's fucked up, man. Wait, who was it? What? Who was it? This really nice lady from Instagram. This nice Hi, lady. She's a, ni- <laughs> she's a nice lady. She's a lady. nice lady. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Well, I, was, I saw she was in town the other day. I was like, hey, you should walk over to the gym because she goes to the N1 gym and works out. Gotcha. And she did. And well... I'm here, not there. Like, oops. Sorry about that. Well, I should have, I should have warned. Just, I leave early in Wednesday. All right, get off, get off the podcast and sprint. Right. Well, no, I can't do that. But I had a kid message me the other day, and he was like, "Hey, my hamstrings are bothering me." And I was like, "Okay." He was like, "I was like, did you guys start football practice?" He was like, "Yep." And I was like, "How much sprinting have you already done?" He goes, "Quite a bit." <laughs> I was like, "Hmm." Soft tissue damage already. And we're a week into football practice. That's not a good sign. But, I mean, hey, you have to show up to do your hamstring work. I can't help you if you don't show up. So, 
Yeah, that's fair. And now I feel like a real dick. Well, get off and go. Just go. It's fine. We've already been on here for an hour. Uh, do you know how minutes. far away I live from the gym, bro? 30 minutes. Go. See ya. 20 minutes. Yeah. Uh, if you drive fast, you'll be there quicker. Oh, I don't so know we've been that. here for an hour and 10, man. It's been a good episode. Go, go, go see this lady. Tell her you'll be there in 20 I'm, minutes. I don't know. Unbelievable. What do you think I am? I don't know. Just trying to be a nice person. Remember? Just drop everything. No, I'm good. Should be more specific when I tell people I'm at the gym all the time, though. Except, Except Wednesdays, for on Wednesdays. From the times of this to this. Uh, I Still there? Go. Yeah. Can you not hear me? Hello? Uh -oh. Can you hear me? There's no sound for you. Oh, no. Can you can you hear me? Hello? Nothing. What? All right, guys. Looks like I'm having no, a I podcast by myself. I got it. Oh, I figured it out. It what the heck? Uh. Shit's oh, just falling off the rails just now. muted itself somehow. Zoom was like, oh. you're done. No more talking. You you muted yourself. You just didn't want to be heard. <laughs> yeah, well. The Nuggets are going to win or what, bro? Well, we, yeah, they already got past my prediction. The, the Heat won a game, so whatever. I'm already over it. I can't believe the Nuggets almost tied it as bad as they played that entire game. I mean, they were winning the whole game. No, they were winning the second and third quarter. They were up 11 at halftime. 15. That's what I'm saying. Like, they should have won the game. Yeah, they played like shit, though. Fourth quarter was bad, yeah. Well, and the Heat got no, it was hot. the whole game they played like shit. They definitely the didn't. Heat played yeah. good, but the Nuggets played like shit. Yeah. yeah. That should worry the Heat, though, that the Nuggets played that bad, and it was a three-point game. So. Yeah, that's what I think. But, I mean, I don't know. It's just. I took my nephew to watch it. That was fun. You did? You go Wait, you went? Not to the actual game. Oh. Where'd you guys go? That'd be pretty balling. Twin I mean, Peaks. You know what Twin Peaks is? Yeah, we have one of those down here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a classier Hooters is what it is, essentially. The food's actually good. So food's that, phenomenal. That's cool. But I feel like everyone says that every time they go to one of those places. They're like, yep, yeah, food's phenomenal. Oh, yeah, is it? Is it really? No, Hooters food pretty much sucks. They have decent wings. But chicken wings are all right. The brisket nachos at Twin Peaks are pretty solid. Yes, would agree with that as well. The uh, scenery is not bad. It was better before I worked at a gym. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. How standards change. Speaking of which, any, anyone that works at one of those places where you have to look good, I can help you with that. The booty, the booty grow program. Yeah. Anybody that wants a pair of glutes. Oh, doesn't God. Doesn't know how to grow glutes. Oh, God. He's going to put you on the hyperextension, everyone. Look out. No, I won't. They're going to use a reverse hyper for that shit. Not the, I didn't say the reverse hyper. I said the hyperextension, 45 degree. Oh, yeah, that thing works pretty good. Actually, the lady that came to meet me at fucking the gym, she's all about training glutes. She's like the glute master. Yeah, just the isolating. Yeah, the stuff Adam has her do is crazy. Got to do those rear foot step around thingy, lunge thingy, majiggers. What are those yeah. things called? Front foot elevated rear step rounds or something like that. Some long just, name. Just a drop lunge. That's it. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. Those will make the glutes stretch. Holy moly. Those hurt. You feel your glutes growing when you do those things. Pretty much. Oh, I remember when you gave those to me for the first time. I wanted to punch you in the face. Oh, yeah, well. I got a booty now. If everyone wants to see if I you have a booty from lifting heavy <laughs> weights and squatting all the time, I have an ass, everyone. So they work. Squat more. Squat more. That's step number one. If you're, not, on the glutes. if you're not squatting and you want your boot to grow. Your boot? Your, your boot, booty? Your booty. Sorry, your booty. If you want your booty to grow and you're not squatting, you're doing it wrong. Stop barbell hip thrusting until you can't thrust anymore. Why is a barbell hip thrust not the most effective way to gain hypertrophy in the glutes? Because it doesn't work the glutes in a lengthened position. Boom. Dropping bombs of knowledge. Look at that. Come on, guys. Come on. I actually knew the answer to that one. Yay me. All right. All right. Here we go. What's a better way to work them in the length and position? Just squat or do a reverse drop lunge. Yeah, squats. Yeah, it's okay. Hack squat. Hack squat would be a good one. Leg press would be good. Leg press would be also good. Feet close together. Shins fairly vertical. I, that's a big misconception, too. I liked that post that Cass made about how... Closing oh. your stance and getting closer actually biases more glute tissue than when you're in that wide stance. Well, it lengthens more of it. Right. 
But a lot of people don't think that. They think it's the other way around. They're like, if I well, widen they my just stance, feel the upper part in the white stance. So yeah. They just assume that the rest of the glutes are doing something. Yeah. Which like, is not necessarily well, not true. Not necessarily true, right? It's not. It's all about. Yeah, the upper third kind of gets pretty good in the white stance. It's mm -hmm. not bad. Yep. But you can get more of it in like the RDLs I did yesterday. You kind of twist and get more of the glutes too. It's pretty awful. Yep. Yep. Adam was talking about that, how he did, he was doing the land, single leg landmine RDLs, but he was kind of doing them at an angle where his foot turns in and holding he that. All kinds of weird shit with those. That's a pretty good, he's like, dude, it lengthens the glutes big time. I also saw my, a really bad quad fail on a squat yesterday. So with one of my people, they shifted forward really bad with their, their like knees went really far forward. Like they were getting out of the bottom and then like they'd get about halfway up. It's almost like the Annie thing. Like we talked about Annie's thing, how her knee, like her quads were struggling. His were struggling 10 times worse than hers. <laughs> His shift was way worse. But so I'm like, well, I know what you're going to get for the next six weeks. We got to bring your quad capacity up. So that's what happens when you don't train for six months, people. Everything goes. Who doesn't train for six months? I can barely make it six days. College happened, apparently, is the excuse. Like, well, this was a kid that I had high hopes for at 170, was going to pull, be my first 500 pound puller, but he's now below 400 again. So, oh well. He was at 405 before, well, actually, probably like 420. He would have been probably 420 when he left last summer. And then he did, he barely got a 365 two inch block pull yesterday. So, I was like, this is what happens when you don't train people. It's just, it's, he was like, but strength is residual, right? I'm like, it has a longer residual. It doesn't mean it sticks around for six months if you don't do anything. Come on now. It's not going to stick around that long. It's only 30 days. I think that's what it is. Plus or minus five days or something like that. Isn't that the residual on strength? Like a month usually? Yeah, I think so. How long do you think strength would stick around just doing pales rails work if you stopped three doing Three weeks, it? I think, is strength. Is it three? Days, so. Something like that. What were you saying? How long would it stick around if you're just doing pales and rails? Yeah. I don't know. Is it worth a why shot to try? Anywhere? Let's try it. Why, why would it go anywhere is the question. Uh, I don't know. Probably because, again, it's a false assumption of what the pails and rails actually are training. But You're making a false assumption or like making a false outside assumption? Outside looking in, people always look at pails and rails and they're like, oh, you're just stretching. I'm like, no, you're not. Mm -mm. No, you're absolutely generating as much possible force. If doing can. correctly. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lady do them today for the first time that... Her back was bothering her because she sat in her car a lot all day yesterday. And I was like, oh, I got just the thing for you. And she stood up and she was like, wow, back feels better. Hips feel better. Like, yep. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Do, 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 do. What else is new, Nathan? Oh... I don't really know a whole lot. I'm trying to get my, trying to get one of my athletes to throw eighty-five. That's new. That's not really new. That was pretty cool. Him jumping on that box, yeah, twelve inches on his box jump. Yeah. I don't know what's a lot. Everyone's always like, I don't even. I I post that feeling like I did something or he did something. I didn't do anything. He did it. But like, I don't know if like a month. He's been with me since August. And I don't know if adding a foot is like a good thing on a box jump. Like I don't know. His verticals also went up six inches, so I don't know. I mean, it's progress. Yeah. So it's not a bad thing. I don't know if it's as fast as some of these other people can make verticals go up. I haven't figured well, out. Oh, maybe on Sunday we'll learn some shit. Yeah. Figure out the secret sauce behind I think that guy stuff. knows how to make some reactive strength. That guy. That guy is pretty good. Really? We're going to tell people who it is. Fuck no. Oh, okay. Fuck people. Tune in. Listen, listen, listen to episode 10 to find episode out. Episode 10, you'll find out who our wonderful guest is. Although after Sunday, it'll just be on the list of people. So, And he's one of the best in the business by far. And yeah. Probably what, 30 years of experience? I don't know, man. He's it's just... It's a 
a wealth of information. I'm like he, one of the nicest people I think I've ever met. Oh my gosh, yes. Stupidly nice. <laughs> that shouldn't be allowed. You're too nice, brother. Right. It's How long do you think we're going to be able to keep him on here? Oh, God. I don't know. Long time. I've heard Eight Khalil talk hours about. later. I was about to say, <laughs> I've got like a three hour maximum. That's my window. So, oh, okay. uh, well, we'll, we'll let him go though. You, if, if, if. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just keep the record just button going. meals and, you know, sharing dinner. Like, yeah, if I have to go, I'll just leave it recording and then I'll just clip off everything that if like I get back and you guys, I'll probably get back and he'll still probably be going. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> The title will just be longest podcast in you in Spotify history. <laughs> how many how many views did we get last week? Four. Four. I got seven on my YouTube, I think. Four. Deppin's up to twenty. Yeah, Depp's got a it, everyone's been saying really good things that about episode. it. Yeah, everyone's been saying really good things about the Depp I episode. I dropped the ball on the next one. You dropped the ball? Yeah, well, I don't know that you ever caught the ball, so <laughs> uh, I didn't well, even see it. I literally, I stopped the recording and I was like, frick Alex, screw Alex. I was like, screw this guy. I was like, he did not need the podcast today. Today was not a podcast day. <laughs> well, I was like, why are you so angry? I'm like, because I just wasted an hour of my life. That's why I just wasted an hour. It wasn't a waste. Watch, that one's going to end up being like one of the more popular ones. It has four. It's not the worst so far. The other one that we exactly. got. Exactly. It's not the worst. The worst was That's one. I thought. Yeah. Just It'll shocking. I thought that was a good one. The Joker one. We talked about the Nuggets. But. Yeah. Apparently not anyone else thought it was good. Oh, the internet's a weird Which space, is, man. The weird, let's it's a take weird the space. YouTube tally. Let's see what we got over here. Got some new subscribers. I got four in the last 28 days. Don't, I always forget to post to fucking YouTube. So. Spotify for podcasters. Let's see. We got four plays on the last one. 21. We're up to almost 100 plays, though. We've almost broke the 100 plays pair here. Oh, hey. Maybe we'll get 100 on the on the 10th. Hey. How do I look at my channel? What is going on here? You've been hacked. Probably not. Nobody wants my shit. <laughs> So you think. Speaking of which, conjugate seminar is coming up in 10 days. Fuck. I got to do. Yeah. Don't remind me. For that. No idea. Don't even have that started yet. Sorry, Khalil. It Sorry. Makes you feel any better, dude? I just won the first one I did. So I'm don't probably going to just have little talking points over here and just wing those. So I have some points that I think, I, I mean, I don't know if it'll be beneficial to anyone. I'll just talk about where I came from and what I got to and how I did it, but. Dang, Deppens were up to 24. The, nice. Yeah, dude, episode eight, we're on seven views on YouTube. There you go. <laughs> episode six is 15. Yeah, Deppens has three likes. It's almost as many. Our first one crushed you with 56. Dude, I think I'm over 100 views on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. 56. There's another 30. That's like 80. Fucking another 10. Yeah, we're over hundo. I think I'm going to... 110 on YouTube. I'm going to reach out to old... Spotify uh, such shit. Is it because there's no video? Or you put the no, video on No, I put the video there, on there. Yeah. And these descriptions that I have at GTP make, mm -hmm. they're amazing. They're getting weirder and weirder, but sure. Why are they getting weirder, they, weirder? I just read them as a robot now. I don't even... <laughs> like, this is so dumb. <laughs> yeah, wait until I start feeding it the stuff that I write, and it just starts writing like me. Oh, good Lord. That's so weird. Did you see the AI system that uh, failed the drone run the other day that killed the thing that was operating it? Like, it was a test run. Nobody actually got killed, but, like, it reprogrammed to believe or something that it was, like, that the guy that was operating it was ineffective and slower, so he just programmed himself to kill the operator so he could do whatever he wanted. This was a drone. Loving it. Like, it. Skynet, here we come. Loving it. Loving it's it. Absolutely terrifying, but sure. Uh, what do I reply to this guy's comment? Should I do it while we're on here? Okay, what's his comment? Good work. I do leg day every three days, but I work my calves every day. They still look like a rope with feet connected, but I'm going to have calves. You're not, you're not going to let it. It's never going to grow if you don't let it grow. Right. You have to let it grow, people. You can't just work the same tissue every day. 
There's a recovery time for everything. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. You have to work within Windows. You can't just kill your quads and then the next day kill your quads and the next day kill your quads and expect them to grow. Jesus, I already have 418 videos on fucking YouTube. Yeah, because you probably have all your shorts uploaded to your to your uh, training app. Shout out Al Ghul Performance Training App. You can download yeah, that for free. 223 exercises I put in that motherfucker. Download the app for free. Make your own workouts for free. You can and use my workouts for free. It's all free. There's almost a year's jacked, worth of training money. for free on there. I mean, if you can make your own, there's more than a year's worth. Oh, I totally well, yeah, did exactly. not make a video of that. Don't you remember? Nobody needs you anymore. They don't need you, so they just need your app so they can put their programming in there. Oh, no, they, they need me. They're not going to do as good no, without me. they but, don't. You know. Remember? They don't need you. Nobody um, really needs us, Alex. Whatever. We're just, get people such better results than they get on their own. Are you fucking kidding me? We're just quote unquote trainers. That's all we are. We're personal trainers. I'm not a trainer. I don't even count reps. <laughs> I do. It makes Pretty people sure they feel count good. reps. Fuck that. Count your own reps. Mm. Just look at I, the timer. I got sure really good at counting reps time. when I was at OPP. Really good at it. Really good at that. Your intern was just count reps. Uh, a lot of it was that. Some pretty high profile clients that came through though. So pretty cool some cool athletes like some cool athletes that came through there so, had some nba players roll through i'll reach out to him say hey aj time you want to come on the the irrelevant podcast aj nobody wants to come on when you ask them i asked three people and they all said yes and then literally 10 minutes before we go on they're saying. like sorry man you can't get anybody to commit which i feel bad because brandon was going to come on but like, hey, my grandma had a last, or mom, my mom had a last minute doctor's appointment sign up or something. So if you want to come on the podcast, we're willing and waiting. No, we're not. Oh, never mind. We're not, people. we're not willing and waiting. It's now a only us podcast and it forever will be, except for the guy that we're having on Sunday. Sorry. No, it's not that. It's just, you can't make it sound so goddamn desperate, Nathan. I'm not desperate. We're, we're willing and waiting. Please just come hang out with us. Oh my, fuck that. <laughs> Take my microphone time. Fuck off. <laughs> it's the only time that Alex gets to vit and actually say exactly what he's thinking. So if you take that away from him, he will find you. I will murder somebody. <laughs> he will find you. And then you. we'll be doing the podcast from an eight by eight cell. You don't want that. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to sneak in the cameras. Hide your though. kids. Hide your wives. Somebody's going to have to sneak in the cameras and the mics. I'm not going to let me be the one that does that. So. Um, just do it on anchor on my phone. <laughs> contraband. Get some contraband. Be making fucking records like Lil Wheezy did while he was in Rikers. Heck yeah. Wheezy F Baby. Nobody even knows who Wheezy F Baby is anymore. Come on. Everybody knows who Wheezy is, don't nope. they? Nope. They fucking better. I played a Lil Wayne song the other day and everybody's like, what is this? I'm like, good like, music. It's awesome. It's better than the trippy red crap you're listening to. That's garbage. <sighs> Get off we're, my lawn moment. We're getting right old. Here. Yeah, we're getting old. <laughs> Every time I have a moment like that, I think of that movie Gran Torino with, <laughs> oh my yeah, God. Exactly. Such a great movie, but I'm like, yeah, Sounds I'm becoming bitches. that. I'm becoming that. That's but a yeah, great I listen movie. to hip hop still. Yeah. I don't. I listen to angry music whenever I trade. Oh, well, yeah, when you train, but like when I do FRC, I don't listen to angry music. People that would tell be me productive. that. People tell me that they're like the angry stuff doesn't work. And I'm like, it what? does. It That's does. Who? Like, whatever, bitch, go get some demons you have to face. They're like, you how do you, it doesn't work. How do you listen to this and train at the same time? I'm like, how do you not? How do you not? I have they're to like, go. Because this is the only time I stuff the demons back inside. Yep. The only time I actually get to be me for like an hour and 20 minutes. Can you leave me alone, please? Get to be me. Can you just leave me be? Buddy. I have to listen to your stupid trippy red for six hours a day. Can I just have an hour? Of... You let them pick the music? Yeah, I'm nice, Alex. What the fuck is wrong with you, It's man? give and take, brother. This is why they don't respect you, because you have not fucking marked your territory. Just walk around <laughs> Be pissing on everything. Because I have to let them not pick the music? Wow, dude. Yeah. Come on. Exactly. Come you can on. put it in the fucking suggestion box, and we'll see if it gets approved. Thank you. I have, <laughs> I have thought about putting a suggestion box up there. <laughs> I can't I wait do. to read those, though. Like suck less. You want shit to change at the gym? You can put it in the suggestion box. I'll, all I'm gonna I'll get read is it just while I'm taking a shit. Stop and being angry. Stop being angry. Suck less. We, we hate you. Material. 
Nobody so thinks funny. I read their check-ins every week, but where do you think I do Monday morning? People are always like, uh, "I, your tra- like, what you give me is hard." I'm like, "Yeah, what did you think I was gonna do? Just let you have a nice little frolic through the flowers? Like, you want to train and get some results? We gotta work hard. Gotta work really hard. Sorry, and I mean, then you die. Good luck. You probably gotta work at least ten times harder than you initially think you have to work. Oh my god! And then it's probably like another ten times more than that. Yep. Once you figured out how hard you can work. Yeah, I think I made the post about that. Like most people don't even know what trying is yet. We're not even at the level of like you're actually trying. I think more people try harder to push out a shit on a daily basis <laughs> than they do to improve themselves. This took a weird turn. We're just talking about your toilet activity, okay? Let's how is that a weird turn? It's just, just think about weird. it. When does anybody else sacrifice and have to strain? I Probably do when they tell- don't want to have to sit on the toilet and they, you know, are shoving shit out of their ass when they shouldn't be. That's what I tell people to do when they do max effort stuff. Like, hey, you're taking a poop. Like, it's like you're taking a poop. Let's go. Well, time. that's the way you're not supposed to poop for anybody who's curious. Well, just push it, push it out. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's the hemorrhoids. Well, so does lifting heavy. So, well, no, lifting heavy leads to a prolapsed anus. If you look at the studies. <gasps> no, thank you. But we're still going to so, do it. I'm going to tell my Mike Merkin's great person that again the other day. I'm like, hey, you know what this research says on you lifting heavy? He's going to be like, no. And I tell him that, he'll laugh so hard. Like Studies show your chances of having a prolapsed anus increase. Because he's always like, dude, you're going to get hemorrhoids from all that heavy lifting you're doing. I'm like, no, that's not actually what it's going to do, but sure. I mean, maybe. It's just going to push your intestine out of the bottom of your butt. He's like, you don't know what training's like until you're bleeding out your butthole. And I'm like, yeah, well... <laughs> Okay. Or bloody nose. Bloody nose is the... I haven't got that yet. Never done that. Have seen stars. Either. Have you gotten tunnel vision? I have not got that one either. A kid that I trained the other day... Plopped like, the... Why are we... Who's turning the lights out? Oh, God. I think a kid <laughs> that I trained did that the other day when he was pulling sumo. He had a blood vessel pop in his eye, I think. Ooh, nice. He got... He's like, but well, I pulled it. I'm like, yeah, you sure as hell did. That's badass. That's the coolest yeah. thing that kid's probably ever done. Yeah. He's pretty like committed to just dying under the bar. That's why he's gonna be a good strength coach. I think he's gonna be That's here. Awesome. In, he's gonna be here in July. He'll be here all July and all August to hang out. I'll bring Pretty that. Much. We can bring him on the podcast. Those I can't. Words, can you... There it goes. Yeah. Oh dear God. <laughs> Did you buy that? Good old Dom Mazzetti. It's already on the way. Good old Dom Mazzetti. You and your tank tops, your bro tanks. Dude, I need to get some tank tops. It's about to be hot as fuck here. I can't. I can't pull the tank top look off. It's just not me. Yeah, right? No. It's a comfort thing. My wife just goes, oh, gosh. <laughs> wow, that's really supportive. No, she hates it. Like, I have a bunch of old cutoffs that I made, you know, back at the cutoff day. She's cut the sleeves off of them, and she's like, throw them away. Just throw them away, please. I'm like, I can't. Those are lame as fuck, bro. No, that's a Missouri thing. That's a Missouri no, culture. that was a teenage boy thing. Hell, yeah, it was. Missouri culture in the gym, baby. It's not Missouri culture. It's like anybody that played sports growing up. Yeah. They'd bro. get tournament yeah. t-shirts and cut the sleeves yeah. off and make the hole so big that you could see your boxers. Yeah. So gay. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. Leave me alone. thought I was cool. I had my, I, I was the gym to gym stereotype of like headphones on, had my pre-workout ready to go, gym bag. <laughs> bro, nice. I don't know if I've ever had a gym bag outside of my backpack. I did when I worked out at a commercial gym for a long time because I was just like, nice. eh. you're one of those dudes. I had to have my stuff. I, I don't go know. Back to the commercial gym, see how bad it is. I have no intentions of stepping foot inside a commercial gym ever again. No, no. Never, never ever. I thought about going to the gym that's right down the road for me just to see what's up, but why everybody chooses to go there? Places are nice. <laughs> yeah, you're an I'll, asshole. Slowly but surely, though. I have these two clients that are just promoting the hell out of me. Nice. So, I had a lady reach out today. Yeah. Word of mouth. Word of mouth's the best seller, that's for sure. All right, bro. I got to wrap this up and get down to the gym to train little little human beings. All right, fucking make sure to upload it right away so I can have something to do. Yeah, my bad. I sent the wrong one that one time. <laughs> It's happened we're, more than once, dude, but we're not going to talk about it. So it was so bad because the the one that I did, I felt terrible because I, I came home when we were at the hospital because I just had to grab some stuff and do the podcast. And then the, the hospital is like 45 minutes away. So when I typed it in and uploaded the wrong one, I was like, God 
dang it. I couldn't drive all the way back. So, but I had someone watching my dogs at the house. So I called it. I'm like, Hey, I need you to do this for me. And like, I had him get on my computer and put it in the thing and upload for me. I was like, thank you so much. Yeah. I screwed it up. I'm sorry. Sorry. All right. It happens. It does. All right, guys. Well, I guess I'll see you on Sunday. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Super secret special guest. Oh yeah. By, by the way, everybody like follow, subscribe, comment, share, whatever the fuck it is you do. Just do it. Do lots of it. I, I would just take a listen at this point. Just listen for a couple minutes, you know? Such a pussy. Don't fucking listen for a couple minutes. Listen for the whole hour and get it done. My wife said that the other day. She's like, I finished it. I listened to the whole thing. Which one did she listen <laughs> she to? She liked the, the Deppin one. She liked the Deppin one a lot. Didn't you? Say That's that? the only one she's listened to the whole thing of? No, she, you've listened to pretty much all of them, haven't you? Yeah. She likes them. The stuff to what? The Kalia. The Kalia one. Sorry, Kalia. She hates you. No, just kidding. <laughs> Racist. No. No, no. <laughs> oh, my Lord. They already think we Missouri are in Missouri. Come on now. Else. Give us a break. No. We're Please good people. Please. We're good Can't people. Can't even hide it for five seconds. Oh, dear Lord. We're good people, I promise. <laughs> yeah, he called you a racist. <laughs> she laughed. Maybe that's not a good thing that she laughed. Yeah, right? Like, you're not helping your case, lady. <laughs> you're not helping, he said. All right, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the weather. Yeah. I will see you Sunday. Adios. See you guys.